Today, we're going to tackle a problem that is a total nightmare for so many manufacturing shops, late deliveries. You know the feeling, right? You're working harder than ever, your team is busting their butts, but you're still falling behind? Well, this one's for you. I mean, this quote, it just says it all, doesn't it? This came from a real shop owner, and it just hits you right in the gut. You can feel that frustration. It's that sense that, hey, we're not lazy, we care. But it feels like the system itself is broken. And no matter how hard you push, you just can't win. So to really get our arms around this thing, we got to start with how we measure it in the first place. Let's break down the one big metric that's at the center of this whole vicious cycle. Okay, so on paper, it looks super simple. We're talking about due date performance, or DDP. All it is is the percentage of jobs you get out the door on time. You know the drill, number of jobs shipped on time divided by the total job shipped times 100. Sounds easy enough, right? As I'm sure many of you know, actually making that number go up, well, that's a whole different story. All right, so let's get into the weeds here. Why is it that just trying harder to get that DDP score up almost never works? It really comes down to this. Most shops are chasing the completely wrong thing. See, here's the thing you've got to wrap your head around. Your DDP score is tough to move for two big reasons. Number one, it's an effect, not a cause. And number two, it's what we call a lagging indicator. It's telling you about the past, not the future. It's literally like trying to drive your car down the highway by looking only in the rearview mirror. It's a recipe for disaster. And this breaks it down perfectly. Over on the left, you've got the real causes, the stuff that's actually happening on your shop floor. We're talking capacity, productivity, those sneaky bottlenecks, your schedule, all that good stuff. Your DDP score over on the right, that's just the result of all those things. So if you want to change the effect, you have to tackle the causes. But that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Where in the world do you even begin? Now this next point, it might sound kind of crazy. It goes against everything we're taught about running a shop. You know the old saying, a busy machine is a profitable machine, right? Well, what if I told you that trying to keep every machine running all the time, that idea of efficiency could actually be making your delivery problem worse. You end up wasting valuable capacity on jobs that aren't due for ages, while the urgent stuff just sits there collecting dust. And that brings us to the big pivot point here. The real secret to fixing your on-time delivery problem isn't about working harder or longer hours. It's about this. If you want to change the outcome, you have to change what you measure. It's that simple. That right there is the fundamental shift in thinking. You've got to stop obsessing over that DDP score that only tells you how you did last month. Instead, we need to start measuring things that can actually predict the future. We need dials and gauges that give us a live, real-time snapshot of the shop's health, telling us where we're going, not just where we've been. Okay, so let's get tactical. Let's open up the playbook. I'm going to walk you through three much smarter metrics, things you can actually use to get a handle on this, like starting today. First up, metric number one. This one completely flips the script. We're gonna stop looking at what's already gone out the door and start looking at what's in your system right now. Think of it as a live health check for your on-time delivery. And here's how you do it. It's actually pretty simple. You take your entire open backlog, every single job, sort the list by the due date. Then you just go down the list and for every job that's already late, you calculate how many days late it is. Add all those days up and you get one powerful number, your total backlog days late. That number, that becomes your new North Star. And this is the magic of a leading indicator. You can make a change on the shop floor today and see if that number starts to go down tomorrow. You get instant feedback. You're not waiting a month to see if your efforts paid off in your DDP score. You know right away if you're moving in the right direction. All right, metric number two, this one helps you hunt down a huge, and I mean huge, hidden problem in most shops, wasting capacity by running jobs in the wrong order. So for this, you're going to look at jobs you've shipped recently, but instead of late jobs, you're looking for jobs you shipped early. Now, if you see that you're shipping a bunch of stuff ahead of schedule at the same time you're shipping other jobs late, that's not something to celebrate. That's a giant red flag. It's basically your system screaming at you that you have a massive opportunity to fix your schedule. And here's the aha moment. It means you probably don't have a capacity problem. You have a scheduling problem. The capacity is already there. It's just being spent on the wrong jobs at the wrong time. If you can just fix the sequence, you can redirect that wasted effort to the jobs that are actually late 
and boost your DDP without spending a dime on new equipment or people. Okay, on to our third and final metric. This one tackles a really critical flaw in how we usually think about DDP. The problem is, a standard DDP score treats every single job as if it's equally important. And we all know that's just not true. So let's talk about something called throughput dollar days, or TDD. It's a really powerful idea. Look at this example. Job A is a $1,000 job, and it's one day late. Its TDD is 1000 No big deal, right? But now look at job B. It's a $100,000 job, and it's a full week late. Its TDD is a whopping 700000 So which one is hurting your business more? This metric makes it painfully obvious where you need to focus your attention. The point here is just crystal clear. Not all jobs are created equal. You have to stop treating a tiny, low-margin job with the same urgency as a massive, high-profit one. It's all about focusing your limited firepower where it's going to have the biggest impact on your bank account. So you might be wondering, okay, this all sounds good in theory, but what happens in the real world? What happens when a shop actually makes this shift and starts focusing on these smarter metrics? Well, the results can be absolutely mind-blowing. Remember that client from the beginning, the one who wrote that letter feeling so defeated? After they made these changes, their on-time delivery shot up to over 98%. 98%! And that wasn't even the whole story. Their total productivity, the amount of work they were getting out the door, jumped by more than 27%. Think about that. They were shipping more stuff, on time, with the exact same people and the exact same machines. But you know, it's about more than just numbers on a report. The real win was a complete transformation of the shop floor. The constant firefighting, the chaos, it just subsided. Communication got better. And for the first time in a long time, everyone had a clear plan and knew exactly what they needed to do to win. So I wanna leave you with this final thought to chew on. If you're not getting the results you want, maybe it's not a people problem. Maybe it's not an effort problem. Maybe it's time to realize that your current system, your metrics, your rules, your priorities, is perfectly designed to give you the exact results you're getting. And if you want different results, you have to start by changing the system.